Hey, this is Mike Moreno. I'm making this video for the good people at jazzguitartoday.com. Uh, just a quick gear rundown, uh, everything that I'm using, a quick explanation. Uh, I'm going to start with the guitars. Um, so, uh, this is uh, the Semi Hollow Body by the great Stephen Marchioni. Uh, I've been playing these since the end of 2009, so around 2010, uh, I got the prototype for this model. Uh, and I've gone through a couple, so I have two of these. I have one that's a spruce top, and this is the maple top that I've been uh, pretty much in love with for the past couple of years, and uh, pretty much just only using this guitar on the road um, until very recently. Uh, so I have, yeah, I still have the spruce top, and the very first one I had the prototype of this model um, I gave back to Steven a few years ago. Let's see. But, as I said, I've been using uh, another one of his guitars recently. This is an awesome uh, take on the classic Les Paul. So this is uh, Mabel Top, Mahogany Back. Um, awesome, awesome guitar. Uh, I love this. I, I've been using it uh, pretty much for all of my home practicing and teaching, and uh, I've even been using it on some of the live streams lately. Uh, all these guitars have tone-specific pickups in them which also uh, I've switched all the guitars to tone specific pickups by uh, so this one is Virtuoso this particular humbuckers uh, are called the Virtuosos so they're awesome uh, and after trying them on first on this on this guitar I put them on the semi hollow body so yeah I would uh, recommend checking them out so coming out of the guitars I'm going into the pedal board uh, I've also uh, always for the last, I would say, seven years, six, seven years, been using Astrorope cables, which a good friend of mine in Texas hooked me up with. Uh, they were out of Austin, but now uh, they're working out of Nashville. So, but awesome, awesome cables, and uh, I really couldn't recommend them high enough. Uh, that one is called the Stage Cable because they have a studio guitar cable and a stage cable. So that's the Stage Cable. So after the guitar and the coming straight into the board. So I'll show that. So this is my board, which is pretty simple, uh, but I'll just run through it real quick. I'm going st first straight into a tuner, uh, the TC Electronic uh, Polytune that you see here. And uh, that's going into a John Landgraf uh, dynamic overdrive pedal. John Landgraf unfortunately passed away a few years ago, so uh, you can't really find his pedals anymore uh, unless they're on eBay for about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. They've gone up to now, which is crazy. <laughs> I think I bought mine for four fifty, which was already expensive when he was alive. Uh, but yeah, now they're they're anywhere between I would say fourteen and, and eighteen hundred on eBay. Same goes for this thing, uh, the class. Classic Clown Centaur by, by Bill Finnegan. Uh, I bought this in 2006 for 300 bucks, and now they're going for oh, almost three grand, at least this model, uh, the silver face one. Uh, but yeah, I got it in 2006 when uh, the sound engineer, uh, when I was touring with Josh Redman, after one of the shows, he was just like, man, you got to get another overdrive pedal. <laughs> that, I think I had a tube screamer at the time, and he was just like, yeah, you need to, you need to hook up your sound. So I went out and got this, which was, yeah, like 300 bucks at the time. So uh, that's going into uh, another overdrive pedal, which is by a great Doug Rocaforte, who's in uh, La Brea, California, whose uh, gear I use a lot. I love his work. And this pedal is, is awesome. It's probably the newest pedal on the board. Uh, so these are th three overdrive pedals in a row. I, of course, they're not on all at the same time. I, I would say that maybe the, the Centaur is always on for my sound. Uh, but uh, the other two are, are constantly being switched on and off. So uh, after that, I'm going into this Parametric EQ by Ibanez. This pedal is from the 80s. I found it in L.A. I had been looking for one. So I picked it up at a used guitar shop in, uh, in L.A. And it's awesome. Uh, especially after overdrives, you can really dial in the tone. Uh, after that, it's going into uh, an old classic uh, DD3 delay pedal by Boss. Uh, it's the only Boss pedal on my on my board, but I, I there was a moment where I tried to get rid of all my Boss pedals and just go to these really kind of boutique pedals, and I ended up selling it. And then 
I regretted it after trying out some other stuff and, and I found the guy uh, that I had sold it to on Craigslist and contacted him. I bought a new, brand new Boss Delay pedal. Uh, it didn't sound the same, so uh, I gave him the brand new one and the uh, $65 or whatever he had paid for this one. I gave him the money back and so he thought it was a sweet deal. So I got my pedal back in the end uh, and it's still on the board. Uh, that goes into these uh, two Strymon pedals, the El Capistan and the Blue Sky, which I'm sure everybody will recognize. Uh, and the reason I switched these pedals, it was just uh, convenience really while I was traveling. Uh, these pedals are really lightweight. Uh, they work great, uh, they sound great, uh, and these two pedals together are smaller than the reverb rack unit I was using, and also they weigh about one third of that weight. I was using uh, an old lexicon at the time, uh, up until, I don't know, 2014 probably. So uh, then I switched to these and I, I just haven't switched back uh, to anything else yet, uh, although I've been kind of keep my eyes on stuff as there's so much new cool stuff coming out. So uh, these probably won't be on there very much longer. Um, also in between the, the overdrives and after the EQ, I forgot to mention, uh, I'm going into a, a Hilton volume pedal and Hilton is great. The, it's a company that makes volume pedals for pedal steel and now they've uh, actually made a low prof profile version for guitar. So when that came out, I got that. Uh, and that's just an awesome volume pedal. and. Uh, other than that, let's see, there's the the POG2, Electro Harmonics. Uh, of course, uh, everybody recognizes this. I use it from time to time, depending on who I'm playing with and what tunes we're playing, and maybe I use it on a recording. And if we're doing any of those tunes, then I'll take it out on the road with me. Same goes for the Digitech Whammy pedal. Um, I think I mainly just use that with Kendrick Scott because I use it on a few tracks on his latest album. And so uh, it's, it's on the road when I play with that band. But yeah, that's about it. And uh, I'll continue on. Okay, so coming out of the pedal board, uh, Astro again, <laughs> and it's going into this Doug Rock Forte preamp. Uh, it's a Telefunken uh, EF804 preamp uh, two in here. Uh, so you can, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but yeah, so there's a real tube in there. Uh, this is just an awesome preamp. I love this thing, and uh, it's just great to have on the road uh, to really kind of help out with the, the backline gear that's provided at all these different venues, which can be really sketchy, uh, as some of you may know. And uh, after the preamp, it goes in. If I'm in New York, uh, then I'm playing through uh, my Duck Rocket Forte uh, combo amp, which is an 18 watt, uh, basically a Marshall circuit amp. It's awesome. Uh, it gives me all the mid-range I want, none of that loose bass that you get out of uh, just like you know, off-the-shelf uh, fenders, and uh, I just love that amp, and uh, the highs are great and powerful without being too abrasive, and so yeah, that's my rig. Uh, I think it's pretty simple <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of jazz guitar players might just plug straight into the amp and that's totally cool too but you have to have a great guitar, great pickups and a great amp, somebody who really worked on all that and um, so I believe in all that also great guitar, great pickups, great amps but uh, for me to really get the tone to, to cut the way that I want to and get the sound and, and the feel off the guitar that I want to have in 2020, 21 I guess now, <laughs> so it's yeah, there's some other things involved, but basically it's, it's just to get one tone, uh, maybe a couple of little variations on that tone, so I'm not really making the guitar sound different than it really sounds. Uh, it always sounds like a guitar, there's just some, you know, maybe a little bit of grit on there, maybe some delay and some reverb, uh, but yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video, and uh, yeah, see you out there hopefully soon. Uh, take care.